So I just want to make a very few remarks uh, about uh, Sapsin and the significance of Sapsin. Um, we've been working uh, in preparation for this launch now for uh, uh, the last few months. Um, and uh, there's been great excitement. Uh, just a couple of weeks ago, we were still continuing with the uh, preparation of our field workers uh, for going into the field. Prior to that, uh, we had uh, uh, a number of pilots uh, around the country. Uh, and we also, I don't know if any of you have gone to the Innovation Hub in, in Victoria, you would have seen our 26 mobile clinics uh, those, clinic, those mobile clinics have been raring to go. Uh, they've been waiting for this particular moment. So uh, uh, this is a, a big occasion uh, for us. It's a big occasion on two counts. The first count is, of course, and, and Cello uh, referred to this. It's the significance of uh, this work in relation to these broader questions that we have in this country, and I really appreciate you using this word, dignity. And what this work has done, uh, this work of Sapson, what this work has done is come to show us the scale of the problem in the country, uh, and to provide us with the means to be able to get behind some of the complexities of uh, what the problem of HIV AIDS uh, is all about. Now, I have, have had the real good fortune over the last couple of weeks, and I'm not sure how many of you have seen this book, but there's a book uh, by a woman called uh, Sheila Henderson. It's called uh, Kinship of Bones. Anybody seen that book? If any of you read it, I recommend it to you. Uh, Kinship of Bones, Henderson. Uh, it's 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 a an absolute archive of what it means to die in this country because of the disease, but also how to survive beyond it, and it accounts for that pivotal moment in our country's history before the rollout of of, 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 of antiretrovirals. So it's just before that moment, and in that moment. You, you have a sense of the incredible distress which our country has gone through. Uh, and what Sheila Henderson does is ethnographically go into the heart of what this problem is all about. So she, she for a, a period of something like 18 months, he lives in and amongst the families who are going through and experiencing and trying to make sense of all of this. And in that experience, you see, of course, this wonder of Ubuntu, and it's an extraordinary thing. You see mothers, brothers, sisters, grandparents uh, playing this role of helping a person come to a sense of his dignity, but you also see our frailties. You see the weaknesses of how family members, despite this thing about Ubuntu, struggle to hold on to the sense of their own responsibility and accountability to their brothers and sisters. So it's a book about great nobility in some senses, but also about our weaknesses as human beings in relation to each other. And this is the significance of this work. This work comes to demonstrate to us what the scale of our responsibility is to one another. Uh, and for that reason, it, it's absolutely important. But it's also important for us as a research council uh, and us working in this field of knowledge production, it's also important in terms of the science which this work uh, is, 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 is all about. We have gone to great lengths to make this work rigorous, uh, legitimate and credible. Uh, and I use those terms deliberately because in the community of science, those words mean a great deal. Uh, because what we are having to do here is to show and provide the evidence, the, the facts. Uh, and, and, and that work, 
that level of work in the country is really important because uh, what we're having to do in this country, amidst all of the other things that we are having to do, is to help raise the level of public discussion around what we know and the implications of what we know. Uh, and to make what we know, particularly our science, uh, so much part of every, the everyday conversation and to give people a sense of confidence that science can be trusted. That this work can be trusted. So you'll see here, like this, we'll talk about it in, in, in a moment. We're going to be going into something like 15,000 houses, our homes. I'm not trying to steal your thunder here. <laughs> you know. um, uh, and the scale of that intrusion, in some ways, into people's homes is, 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 is quite extreme. So imagine here yes, somebody comes, one of these field workers, uh, and apart from saying, can I take your blood? You, know, I mean, you, you can imagine just how difficult that, that, that encounter is. And then you begin to ask questions about their behavior, and it's intrusive in some ways. So we have to try and show through the value of this work why we should be trusted in coming into people's homes to, to, to do this, this work. That's why I write to, write to care over there is really important in relation to these kinds of things. So, <clears throat> in closing, colleagues, I'm really very honoured that we in the HSRC uh, <clears throat> have the responsibility of, of leading this work. Uh, I, I think that uh, we gain a great deal out of it, but I, I hope that in terms of, of policy formation, decision making and so on, that you know, the significance of it is carried forward into the future for us to get to the point 15 years from now where we will not need to have this meeting. So thank you all very much. Thanks for uh, being here this afternoon.